I want to ask you about the college football playoff, right? Officially, we have a 12-team playoff entering this season. We have the 5 plus 7 format. And we had that format for about eight hours before <laughs> sources here with Pete Thamel say the idea of a 14-team 14 14 college football playoff was discussed by the CFP Management Committee meetings in Dallas. Nothing is imminent, but it would begin in 2026. <laughs> I said this when we got the 14 playoff. Before Larry Culpepper <laughs> even graced us, with his presence on the Dr. Pepper commercials, people said, well, we need eight already. Here we're already talking about 14 before we even get you on to talk about 12-team playoff. What are your thoughts about all this? I don't even think there's 12 teams capable of winning the national championship. But Very we got to make sure we give everybody an opportunity, right? I mean, and we're and I, and I hear the phrase, my good buddy, Barrett Salee, always says, we're, we're trading access for excellence. And my response to that is, okay, I can see that viewpoint, but eventually we will get to the excellence. The problem is, is unless something starts changing in the college football landscape, it's still going to be the same four teams. You might have an anomaly. You might have a year where somebody gets hot and goes on a run. But here's what nobody's talking about. And I talked about this with FCS coaches when I was doing playoff uh, games on TV this past fall. They're like, you have no idea the, the battle of attrition that it takes with a roster to survive a regular season. Oh, God. And then yeah. have the gauntlet of the playoff in that many weeks do you understand the depth the luck the talent the quarterback play that you're gonna have to have for four straight weeks to do that how many teams are built that way five Mm -hmm. maybe six maybe six and i understand we want to give the group of five team a a shot or we want to give you know a team that's sitting there maybe it's utah at 11 or something and we want to put them in there but does anybody actually believe they're going to win the national championship? They're not going to win it. No. 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 They're not. I'm sorry. And, and that's nothing against them. But now we're in this new NIL world and the transfer portal world. All we're doing is widening the gap. We're not narrowing the gap. We're making all the teams that already have all the resources bigger, badder, and stronger. So they could put 12. They could put 14. They could put 16. I'm here for all the games. I love it. I'm, I'm in. But I don't think it's going to change who we're sitting here looking at when we get to that top four. Why don't you make the point that you made to me when I said similar things a couple years ago about how the the possibility of expanding the playoff may lead to more parity in the years to come. Yeah, Uh, and and I want to make sure when when we say parity, I I don't think we define it well enough. I I think when when we say parity, what I mean is I'm not saying there's going to be 30 teams that can win the national championship now. I'm saying that there are Maybe we, maybe years like last year will become the norm because I think last year was an anomaly. This is what I keep hope. I'm hoping last year wasn't an anomaly. But if you look at the past, it was. There were more teams that could win a national championship last year than I can remember in the previous ten years. Yeah, like, like the amount that. of teams. So I'm hoping it's a new norm. I'm not banking on it. But what I do think is, and again, the Power Five and the Group of Five need to split. I think you're going to see that split. Probably here pretty Great. soon. We, they need to split. The group of five needs their own national championship. I think they should have their own 12-team their own playoff. playoff. I'd love to have three I'd, sets I'd of playoffs. love it. Power five, group of five, FCS, put it in a bucket and pour it all over. <laughs> but Sign me when, up. Yeah, when, when, when I look at, at parity, what I mean is, now with the 12-team playoff, and, you, and obviously teams with similar resources are going to have similar results in recruiting with NIL, right? Because money talks at the end of the day. So in the world of, of the high-level power five, Being able to go in there when everything else is even. I can give you this amount of money. They can give you this amount of money. But coach, your team never makes the playoff. And we all know that NIL is very important. But it's the second most important, you know, three-letter acronym or whatever is that starts with N and ends with L. Because NFL still makes you more money than NIL (laughs) ever will. So guys are looking for that pipeline still. Well, what is the best tape you can have? It's that playoff tape. That tape of Alabama playing Michigan is a hell of a lot more valuable than Michigan playing Rutgers. And these kids know that. So I think being able to go in the living room and say, listen, here at Texas A&M, we made the playoff. We showed you that we can do it. We can pay you what Bama pays you and what Georgia pays you. Here at Tennessee, we made the playoff. Here at, 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 you know, let's say UCF. We made the playoff this year. We're a growing brand. We can pay you. Mm-hmm. I think you talk, You used the word access. I think it gives you credit, more credibility in the living room, even if you're an eight seed. Even if, 
Imagine, think about the NCAA basketball tournament. How many more people knew who St. Peter's was and maybe made the decision to go play at St. Peter's after they made that run in the NCAA tournament? Why? Because it gave them credibility. So why did Shaheen Holloway get that job at Seton Hall? He had credibility. He can go in that living room and say, listen, we can pay you this, and we got a chance to win the whole damn thing. Not the Meineke Car Care Bowl, not just a New Year's Six Bowl, but the whole thing. Now, it's not going to be a huge increase in parity, but I think it may turn what I thought was the greatest year I've seen in college football in a long time, which was last year because more teams could win it for longer. Maybe that's the new normal, and maybe that'll help us get there. I'm, I'm hoping, but I actually think there's some validity to it. I know so, that was long, but sorry. No, no, li- listen, I, and, and, again, I'm for more games because I obviously love the sport of football. And, but I also look at the seating and the five plus seven model and things of that nature. And, and if you take a look at, let's just say, Alabama and Georgia last year, or Alabama and Georgia in 2021, right? What do you think Georgia would have done in the college football playoff last year? Oh, Given I... the state of that team, whoa. Like, that team, it, first of all, it would have been Georgia and Michigan for the national championship. I agree with you guys that. Agree? I agree okay. with yes. that. And that was the one team that Georgia, that Michigan would have struggled with the most, in my opinion. In I agree with opinion. that. I agree with that right. as well. So now we're going to look forward and that Georgia team last year would what be the fifth or sixth seed, which is mm-hmm. fine, and that's going to happen. That poor twelfth seed. It's not going to happen a lot. Well, huh? the six, the sixth seed, because Florida State would have been the fifth. Just remember that, Tom. Correct. Yeah. Oh. They, can't make, they can't make the fourteen, but they're right there at five. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine backdooring your way into the twelve team playoff? You're like, guys, we're an eleven seed. Yeah. Which means we're gonna play a six. We got a chance. And like, and the six is Georgia. Oh Georgia. no. <laughs> yeah, but like, I look at this That's year. What I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm saying eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. How are you supposed to beat those teams and do it three weeks in a row? Yeah. Well, and and two, uh, again, like the conference championship winner of the the Power Four now gets that automatic one through four seed. So you could have a team, Clemson goes undefeated the whole year. Let's say they're dominant. They lose the ACC championship game. Now they're 12 and one, and you're the five seed playing the 12 seed because, you know, I keep using this example. Pitt (laughs) beat you in the ACC championship Mm -hmm. at nine and three. Now they're the four. But Tom, like, what worries me, what scares me to death, is I look at this year and I look at Georgia and Ohio State and I'm like, I don't, I don't know if there's anybody close. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody close right now, just to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think the other thing too that's different now at this time of year than it's ever been before is because of the transfer portal, we're all kind of scrambling to navigate rosters and to figure out like, first of all, where is everybody? Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Number two. Number two, at what point are we going to have this backfire on somebody? Because it's going to. And I'm not saying it's, saying it's Ohio State. But if you go out, right, in the transfer portal, and they, you could make an argument they did one of the best jobs of any team in the transfer portal, and you start paying big money and those guys don't perform, then what? Right? USC. Then what? Yeah. No question. The difference is USC, though, is USC stinks on defense. They're yeah, going to continue too. to stink on defense because they got no players and the coach doesn't care. Okay? I agree with that. But Ohio State's got dudes on defense. They needed a couple of the you know pieces of the puzzle. And I saw them in the Cotton Bowl up close and first, and they're, they are really, really good. So, But at some point or another, a lot of this NIL stuff, you better be sh- sure that you are paying really mature mm-hmm. people that understand the gravity and the magnitude of what it means when you start earning a lot of money on your end of the bargain to now perform and earn that money, right? Because that's why I think, like a Caleb Downs, I don't worry about Caleb Downs one. Caleb Downs loves football. Caleb Downs is going to be a top 10 pick. He's an absolute difference maker. Pay him whatever you want. I had Nick Saban tell me he's the best freshman secondary player he ever coached Alabama outside of Minka Fitzpatrick, all right? Mm-hmm. Pay him whatever you want. I don't worry about him faltering. I worry about the guy that's a one-hit wonder, goes on the market, makes a bunch of money somewhere, and doesn't perform worth a damn the next year. I, I, I think that's 100% true. It's like they say, listen, they made Napoleon the emperor of, of Europe, and his ass still ran when it, it got tough. So imagine some of these guys, <laughs> yeah. you know, at, at, at the end of the day. Hello, YouTube. It's me, once again, your fearless sports media friend, Jay Crane. Hit that subscribe button. Because if not, 
Maybe you really are as lame as what they called you in high school.